From financial market disruptions and threats to government operations to data breaches in healthcare and the targeting of critical infrastructure, the world is facing an onslaught of cyber attacks and they're getting more sophisticated, frequent and widespread. These attacks have crippled institutions, drained public money and compromised individuals and South Africa is in no way immune. So in 2024, what are the biggest cyber threats to businesses and individuals? And what are the top risk mitigation strategies that we need to consider? Hello, I'm Jeremy Maggs and this is No Ordinary Wednesday. It's our in-depth look at what's driving markets, shaping the economy and changing the game. Now, you might not know it, but October is Cyber Security Awareness Month. And I'm joined by Investex Information Security Officer in South Africa, Norma Lazo, and her UK counterpart, Tash van den Heerfer. And together, we're going to look at the impact of cybersecurity threats that the International Monetary Fund says have more than doubled since 2020. We'll also discuss the latest trends and how to keep yourself and your business safe from these attacks. Norma and Tash, a very warm welcome to No Ordinary Wednesday. So, Norma, let me start with you. In South Africa, we've seen government departments, businesses and individuals all targeted by cyber criminals. In your opinion, are these cyber attacks increasing? How worried, how concerned should we be? I think when you look at it, in my opinion, they're definitely increasing. If you read articles, if you're online, you will see that there's a lot of research that talks about the increase in cyber attacks. Um, And this is not just globally. Even in Africa, we tend to see lots of data breaches, cyber attacks that have actually been effective, and it just continues to increase. So we should be concerned. We should remain vigilant. It's a very important part of increasing our cybersecurity in South Africa. So Norma, ransomware is on the rise. My understanding is a type of malicious software blocking access to a computer system until a sum of money is paid. What are you seeing as the current top security threats in South Africa this year? Ransomware remains one of the top security threats. It's always going to be a big part of the current environment. However, when you look at the trends that are happening now, we also do have a lot of advanced phishing attacks that are leveraging AI capabilities to become more convincing and targeting people. Also, we have a lot of advanced malware, which is leveraging AI as well to attempt to evade detection. So with the advent of AI, there is more advanced attacks from that aspect. We also see a lot of business email compromise where attackers impersonate legitimate contacts. And this is also being used a lot to commit cyber-related fraud. And lastly, I'd probably say supply chain attacks. A lot of supply chain attacks are happening on software and technology solution providers. This is happening globally, but it is impacting South Africa directly and indirectly. Now, Tash, let me throw the ball to you. In uh, Britain, we saw a massive attack on the National Health Service. If memory serves, it was earlier this year. And perhaps even more scary is the fact that the UK government's Cyber Security Breaches Survey found that 50% of businesses and 32% percent of charities have experienced some type of cybersecurity breach or attack in the past year. So from your perspective then, give me a view on that and what some of the more common types of threats that is currently on your radar? I think we will always see common themes of attacks globally. And similar to SA, we're seeing a sophistication increase in phishing attacks, leveraging AI capabilities. We've also seen an increase in supply chain attacks. But I think the thing that's probably quite prevalent at the moment is the uptake in DDoS attacks. With Microsoft being such a victim this year, that massive business impact was felt globally. And Tash, one of the biggest cyber attacks to come out of this year, and again, correct me, me if I'm wrong, is the threat of deep fakes. So these are fake videos of celebrities, chief executive officers and politicians, no one it seems is spared, uh, are used for malicious purposes. So how is this type of threat, in your opinion, translating into the world of business? So as Norma alluded to earlier, majority of threat actors are actually financially motivated. So commonly it would be fraud. Cybercrime is an extremely lucrative business with reports showing that I think costs of cybercrime are being close to $9.1 trillion this year. But however, motivation can also stem from many other things such as political or social gains, uh, reputational harm. I need to name a few other examples. But there's an old movie that says if you want to to find the answer, follow the money. Uh, Tash, in your opinion then, 
it is obviously financial gain that is in some way driving the steep increase in cyber attacks. Yes, correct, Jeremy. I think exactly that. What we're also seeing is the pace and volume can be attributed to the era we are in at the moment. Today, we're in an information age where data is available to everyone. It's been driven by this digital era burst that's enabled our world to be so interconnected. So the more information we ourselves make available online, the easier it becomes to target corporate and individuals with real world context that uh, makes it believable. So, Norma, that's the broad canvas then. Let's focus specifically now on the financial sector. And I want to quote to you the IMF, the International Monetary Fund Global Financial Stability Report. It was out in April this year. Almost a fifth of reported cyber incidents in the past uh, two decades have targeted the financial sector. So, are regulatory frameworks and IT systems in the financial industry keeping up with this rapid evolution, this increase, this acceleration of cyber threats? Regulatory authorities are certainly showing increased focus and more active response to these changing threats. We see a lot more regulators releasing cyber-related guidance and standards to drive better security in the financial sector, as well as more frequent engagement with the financial sector around cybersecurity and accountability in meeting best practice standards. If you bring it back to South Africa, you look at the Prudential Authority and Financial Sector Conduct Authority. They released a joint standard for 2024 on cybersecurity and cyber resilience. That just shows that there's a lot of movement towards making us more accountable as a financial sector and ensuring that we try and ensure that our standards are up to par with what's happening with the cyber threats. Also, globally, if you look at the standards, there's a lot of revision around ISO, NIST. They're doing a lot of revision, trying to update the standards, make sure that they are more current in line with the threats that we see. We'll continue this conversation in just a moment with a look at how to keep yourself and your business safe from cyber attacks. But first, just a quick reminder that a new episode of No Ordinary Wednesday drops every fortnight. Please don't miss it. Subscribe to Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like the channel, please take a moment to rate us. So, Norma, let me come back to you. And we've spoken about how attacks are getting more sophisticated. They're more prevalent. What, in your opinion, are the most pressing threats that business in South Africa needs to be guarding against? Ransomware for me still remains a top priority. It continues to be a growing threat with a number of successful ransomware and data breaches related to extortion attacks being reported. And what's changing now is that the victim profile is actually getting wider. More small non-profit organizations, schools, legal firms are also getting targeted. So it's still a big focus area for us. I think Tash alluded to this earlier. Attackers tend to focus on cost, the path of least resistance. So we need to make sure that we pay attention to our controls, that our security is up to par to tackle these kind of attacks. Another thing that I think is very important is to look at the number of data breaches that we have. It's a very important type of attack that we need to think about. We need to think about how we actually respond and how we also inform customers and other businesses that have been impacted by those data breaches so that they can take precautionary and preventative actions. This helps them protect themselves as well after the fact. Norma, you talk about paying attention to controls, and I think that's critical. Are there specific steps in the here and now then that businesses need to take to counter the risks that you've outlined? I think a big part of what businesses need to look at is how attacks actually become successful. Phishing is a very good example of where it's the first point that can lead to a number of attacks. People clicking on links, entering credentials on fake sites, this can lead to cyber fraud. So a big focus should be on tools that assist in identifying phishing attacks as well as the correct cyber incident response. Another critical element of ensuring that phishing is not as successful as security awareness. I think it's one of those things that is underrated. Businesses do not look at it as much as they should. Training staff is very important in identifying phishing emails and how to respond. It also includes talking to customers, clients, just giving them information when there's a phishing attack happening, what is happening there, and they can actually learn how to identify and respond and limit the success. Last thing I'd like to add is another important element is having threat-based risk assessments. This helps organizations understand the type of threats and allows them to bring in appropriate security controls for that business and that industry sector. It's important to know the maturity of the controls and identify the gaps. And this will help you understand what to implement to manage the risks. 
Tash, we've been speaking about business, but uh, key to this conversation, of course, are individuals. I think it would be fair to say that we all know someone who in one way or another has fallen victim to a cyber scam. Before we talk about preventative measures, maybe just give us a sense of how, in fact, we are being targeted. Typically, as individuals, we are targeted via social engineering on our known social platforms. So things like WhatsApp has become very common. Other social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram. These are platforms that are used globally for private use, um, but also because it's available on the internet, it means that they're able to use those platforms to extort us as individuals. There was quite a bit of an uptake in smishing um, a year or so ago, but what I think will be coming along the line is an uptake in vishing, which is voice uh, automated phishing attacks with deep fakes as a modus operandi to do that. Fortunately, as cyber defenders, it has been the same modus operandi for years, but we've definitely seen a sophistication increase. So are there any specific steps then that individuals, you and I, should be taking or doing to keep our information and uh, perhaps more importantly, our finances out of the reach of cyber criminals? A lot of this is common sense, but remind us again. Jeremy, someone once gave me advice and that was less is more. The less information we have available online, the harder it is to become an easy target. I think as individuals, we need to be vigilant around our own data and willingness to share that kind of information, but also take necessary steps to apply controls to our own personal platforms on our online banking and our social media. A lot of companies also provide awareness. I know us as Investec, we obviously do a lot of stuff to notify our customers and educate our customers around the importance of cybersecurity. But lastly, as a control, just pay attention to the news. I think be vigilant and be aware of the data breaches that are happening around the world and check whether you know you do business or have any any association to those those companies. Absolutely critical. We've got to take a degree of responsibility for our own safety in this respect. Folks, as we come to the end of this conversation, maybe let's touch on more positive developments. And Norma, back to you. The biggest trends in late 2024 going into 2025 when it comes to cybersecurity, what are you looking out for and how are they changing the industry? I'm assuming that uh, the criminals will always probably be one step ahead. But, uh, you know, those who are who are fighting the fight are are, are chasing hard. For us, I would say we are one step ahead of the attackers. They may look like they're ahead, but we are actually tracking much further ahead with all the advancements in technology that we have. I mean, when we look at the biggest trends these days, AI obviously comes to the fore. There is a lot around AI and what the opportunities and one of those is what it can do in the security space. It brings in advanced data analytics and increasing capability to identify and predict cyber threats. And it's embedded more in security tools and that enhances detection systems. We've also got a lot of improvement in terms of the way that we do our cybersecurity modeling. We're moving a lot more away from traditional models. If you think about the adoption of zero trust and identity first, those approaches are moving away from using the perimeter of the network as a security point, rather looking at identity, verifying and continuous verification to make sure that the right people have the right access to the right data at the right time. One other area that's quite exciting for me is quantum computing. There's a lot of work around that, a lot of research. It's immense processing power, gives us the ability to process vast amounts of data and solve complex problems. And some of the research around that is, can we use it to develop more robust cryptography to help us have better encryption and stronger protection for our digital data? I think these trends will continue into the future and will bring more positive developments to the cybersecurity landscape. Norma, thank you. Uh, Tash, I'll give the final word to you then. Let's also look ahead uh, and give me a sense of what you think new or emerging technologies are going to come into being that will strengthen cybersecurity systems over the next uh, few years. Where is your head? What's your intelligence telling you? So if you take a look at what Norma had spoken about in terms of trains that are en route, we obviously need to take a look at what those trains mean in relation to our organization. So I think a lot of companies 
companies and a lot of individuals are looking to move their capabilities into the cloud. That means that focus needs to be had around your cloud security environments. There's a number of very interesting players that are coming into the market that are focusing on SaaS capabilities, uh, SaaS security capabilities, you know, additional visibility over the quantum computing space. I think as security individuals, monitoring and oversight is one of the biggest tools we have. So we see a lot of AI and behavioral analytics type vendors that are making a play to bring the two worlds together to make the data available quicker. But as Norma alluded to, the strongest tool in any arsenal is always about managing the identity and the user access. So always a a keen eye to keep out on those kinds of cybersecurity vendors en route. Well, thank you both uh, so much for the update. Uh, Norma Schlazo and Tash van den Heerfer, thank you for joining me on this edition of No Ordinary Wednesday. Please join us again in two weeks as we continue to explore money trends shaping your world. If you haven't yet added us to your podcast feed, search for Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you get your podcasts and hit that subscribe button. And please don't forget our podcasts are now on YouTube. Until next time, goodbye from me, Jeremy Maggs, and the entire Focus Radio team. The views expressed are those of the contributors at the time of publication and do not necessarily represent the views of the firm and should not be taken as advice or recommendations. Investec Limited and subsidiaries, authorized financial service providers, registered credit providers, and long-term insurer.